are they, sir? Movie begins with some out-of-nowhere flashback explosions that are supposed to mean something, I guess, but really only serve the boner of Michael Bay. Guy putting flowers on a grave in the rain cliché. I'm thinking maybe they should have adjusted the lighting, or just picked a day where it's not so f***ing sunny outside to film with the rain machine. This gravestone plays the pronoun game. It didn't matter if Tony Scott directed it or Michael Bay did, Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer made sure all of their movies looked 100% the same back in the mid-90s. I'm having trouble distinguishing this movie from Crimson Tide. The Navy's conveniently blatant signage is both blatant and convenient. Also, when they were making this sign, were they worried that they wouldn't have enough room after typing naval, but instead of just starting over with a new sign, they just typed weapons a little smaller, then realized they had enough room after all, so decided to go back to the original font size for the word Depot? This side of the naval base isn't guarded, even though there's a visible watchtower that is inexplicably much shorter when they get to the top of the hill. Guard doing something besides guarding when a group of people show up with a plan to break in cliche. <laughs> these marines shoot off loud grappling hook arrow guns that hit the fence with no one noticing. Okay, sure, these aren't lethal weapons they're using, but this dude just crashed through a window and fell out of a 30-foot tower. So if he's okay, it's only because they got lucky. Movie reduces the U.S. Navy to Bond villain henchmen. We got 30 minutes till those darts were off. I'm glad we now know they were shooting the other military personnel with darts, so they are still morally on the up and up, even though they're there to steal chemical weapons to threaten San Francisco. Why would just anyone on the base have access to this room? The now sedated soldiers were just guarding it, and they don't need access. If these weapons are as dangerous as we're about to find out they are, then only a few people should have access to them, right? Right? Jesus H. Christ, how many of these skin-burning chemical weapon missiles that we probably will never use do we need? And why the sh are they protected only by a padlock and not another f***ing keycard? Trained soldiers get sloppy, just so you can see the devastating effects of the sh they're stealing. Uh-oh, that's a Beatles album right there. 1964 James Bond will not be happy. Because I'm a Beatlemaniac. And second, these sound better. If he's gonna play the these sound better card, then he should know that he could get one that's not a first U.S. mono pressing for about the same price as a CD. Could be detergent, or could be sarin gas. God damn, do they have to do this every time detergent comes through the airport? Saren is a GPS. That is correct. It's excellent that Marvin is being trained, so he has to tell the trainee things that are valuable for us, the viewers, to know. Hold it there, Stanley! Isn't don't play with the potentially deadly objects inside a crate even though they seem unassuming one of the first things you learn at chemical weapons specialist school? I wonder how much extra time it took them to rig the baby doll's eyes to open when the weapon is triggered, because that was definitely not time wasted. Also, whoever designed this went to the Batman Villain Institute of Weapons Design. The bad news is that the gas is corrosive and it's eating our suits. I have some more bad news. The FBI didn't spend the extra money to get the suits that can withstand corrosive materials, even though this is a chemical weapons lab. There's enough C4 explosive and poison gas to blow the whole chamber and kill everybody in the building. I highly doubt that baby doll has enough C4 and poison to take down that entire building. I don't know, mostly because I don't want to Google how much C4 would it take to take down a building. Clear! Thank God. I'm glad this totally unnecessary action scene filled with all the cliches happened. Look how big this is! You want me to stick this into my heart? Are you f***ing nuts? You guys are starting to make me feel like you don't need me at all. I need you to tell your teacher that you need to get back on the boat and go home right now. And your teacher will do just that at the drop of a hat, no questions asked. And the boat, which is obviously on no schedule whatsoever, will just leave immediately. Also, I'd rather point our deadly skin-eating chemical weapons at you instead of holding you hostage, because I'm either incredibly evil or incredibly stupid. The rebel soldiers are able to fly these two stolen Black Hawk helicopters literally right past the U.S. Army post at Yerba Buena Island without raising any eyebrows. It's an anti-motion trembler device. It's custom made. Nobody knows about it. And nobody expects it. Dr. Cox made this homemade motion sensor, and takes the time now to explain it, because he knows it's going to be important to the plot later. And then if they disturb Mr. Backup here... Here's hoping that this is where they decide to come in. <laughs> Wasting bullets. Captain Fry, Captain Darrow, this is my first operational situation with you and your men, and I have to say thus far your conduct reflects your reputations. These guys just showed up in helicopters two minutes ago. What the f*** have they done that's so special? But you can never again set foot on your native soil. Hummel explains all the potential drawbacks to their treasonous plan, which they surely already know during the middle of said treasonous plan. I want to know who I'm talking to. This is Brigadier General Francis X. Hummel, United States Marine Corps from Alcatraz. Out. I'll cancel your reservations. How the actual f*** would she know that he needs to cancel his reservations? When Hummel called his office, did he tell the secretary his fiendish plot before she transferred the call to Womack? It seems Alcatraz was just reopened. Who the f*** says this during a hostage criminal warfare situation? Last night, General Hummel, using brutal but non-lethal force under the guise of a security exercise, walked off with 15 VX poison gas rockets. Wait, did the weapons depot think that was just a security exercise? If so, they f***ing failed. These pictures are part of the standard issue photo shoot that every soldier who served in Vietnam had to participate in. And the Congressional Medal of Jesus.
Hummel also fought in the war on Christmas. We never admitted we sent troops into China. Sinclair uses the word admitted, which implies that he knows they sent troops into China, which leads me to believe everyone else in this room and Hummel would know about it. So why the f bring it up? We have to identify the hostages and contact each of their families. Uh, tell them something, make up a story, and we've got to keep this undercover. Right, because we wouldn't want to evacuate the city or anything. Also, if we don't want this getting out, why call the hostages' families and lie to them? Wouldn't it be easier to not contact them at all? 60 or 70. Well, that's, that's not so bad. Thousand. That dude actually thought a VX gas missile would only cause 60 or 70 people to die. I mean, I know he's supposed to be the dumbass in this movie, but come on. The problem with VX poison gas is that it's designed specifically to withstand napalm. I'm just going to go ahead and say everything they say about VX gas in this movie is wrong. I'm not even going to check the facts. I'm pretty sure all of it is wrong. Nicolas Cage having sex plus five sins. Yeah, downstairs in 10 minutes. Goodspeed doesn't ask any follow-up questions, nor did the person who called him have enough time to even say, we need you to come to San Francisco. She still has on underwear, which is a sin for two reasons. There is someone who I think can help us. Wait a minute. The whole plot revolves around getting John Patrick Mason to guide them through the tunnels of Alcatraz. But this guy's been in a solitary cell for more than 30 years, and Kyle Reese just said, Alcatraz has been ripped up and rebuilt for years. Under there is a maze of shit. So how is Mason supposed to navigate it, even if he did not know all the tunnels so many years ago? What do you know about VX gas? Discovered by mistake in 1952. If it was discovered by mistake in 1952, then why did What's-His-Face tell us it was designed? Was it accidentally designed? The FBI decides to set up their mobile command at Pier 39, which is a giant tourist trap, instead of the Coast Guard port that is on a f***ing island off the Bay Bridge. Yes, it's a quarter. FBI guy surely violates all sorts of protocols by throwing any object at this extremely dangerous and intelligent prisoner. Why don't you go ahead and have his handcuffs taken off, please? No one pokes their head in and says, I'm sorry, we can't allow that. That shitty lightweight aluminum chair is able to scrape a quarter into a point. And he clearly didn't even need to do that with the quarter at all, given that the window shattered only where his elbow hit it, and then just shattered the entire f***ing window. Don't come to San Francisco. Like hell I'm not coming! Did she forget her fiancé is a chemical weapons specialist for the FBI, and is there on work-related business? If he's telling her not to come, she should probably assume it's because something terrible is happening. Ah yes, the nearby shower phone. Classic. You've got to be kidding me, no scissors. I mean, did they tell Picasso no brush? This entire character. These asshole FBI guys didn't order room service, but they don't question all the expensive shit coming up to their room at all. Try some of this lobster. Mason ordered snacks, so room service sent up all the lobster they could find. We shake on it. Even though Womack has a history with Mason, he still agrees to shake his hand when he obviously looks like he's planning something. There's virtually no way this action ends without John Spencer falling to his death and probably taking Sean Connery with him. Any other outcome is sinful as Mason runs somewhere after doing this, but how is it anywhere other than where these FBI agents are coming from? Did they just let him run by them? And all I care about is, are you happy with your haircut? This character is the gay equivalent of blackface. What shit, you f***ing you're gonna pull my arm out! How is it not already pulled out? Mason pushes these guys out of the way on the up escalator when there's a perfectly stationary set of stairs to his right. Good speed does the same f***ing thing. Could Mason not go around this product placement? And why was that asshole driving so slow anyway? Guess that little mail car was delivering several landmines. If not, then this is just a bullshit explosion. I hope you're insured! <sighs> oh well, why not? Because the car would most likely fail and you'd probably die? And property damage? And you're a chemist? I can think of several f***ing reasons. Old lady crossing the street, you know a f*** you movie. Broken windshield, not broken windshield. Some serious bullshit. We just f***ed up your Ferrari. It's not mine. Neither is this. Good speed is supposed to be the good guy, right? Jade? No, I'm Stacy. Jade's a friend. Maybe he wasn't talking to you, Stacy. I got him. Why is the lab rat guy a better field agent than all the actual field agents? The FBI clearly knows about Jade, since she's listed in the computer system as Mason's next of kin. Someone else should have known to monitor Jade's whereabouts, because that seems like one of the only places Mason would try to go. But I don't think that we should romanticize what happened between you and her meeting in a bar after a Led Zeppelin concert. Does she think that because he's old, he can't remember what happened between him and her mother, so she has to lay it out for him? Or is this just lazier backstory writing that this movie seems to excel at? FBI, ma'am. Father's working with us. He's helping us resolve a dangerous situation. Good cover, Stanley. Let's hope Jade doesn't look around at all the police officers with their weapons drawn pointed at their general direction. My blueprint was in my head. I was underground for three days in the dark. You mean nobody went looking for you down in these tunnels when you escaped? And that's when the blueprints were accurate. Nobody looked for you for three days. You're between the rock and a hard case. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been in a combat situation? An incursion underwater to retake an impregnable fortress held by an elite team of U.S. Marines in possession of 81 hostages and 15 guided rockets armed with VX poison gas. This guy doesn't define a combat situation as much as he outlines the plot of the movie. <laughs> 
so Goodspeed is vomiting now that they're going to bring him along on this combat mission. But so far, this is against the unlikely badass character they've created. Calmly snipping a bomb wire while poison melts his suit. Crashing through a window in a Ferrari. I mean, he's either a wimp or he's not. Make up your mind. I always expected something like this was going to happen, but nothing prepares you for it. Except for all that FBI training. And I'll send someone to pick up your girlfriend and bring her here to the command center. Instead of putting her back on a plane to Virginia where she'll be safe. Now this is atropine. If you come in contact with the gas, you have 20 seconds to inject it into your heart. First of all, if he's the brainiac chemical specialist he's supposed to be, then he would already know this. Second of all, atropine would probably work great for real VX gas, but wouldn't do sh** for this fantasy movie VX gas that melts your skin off. Instead of explaining how atropine works to good speed, they should have used that valuable time to explain something that he doesn't know, like how an oxygen tank works. Night vision! He meant to say blacklight. Honestly, this music is interchangeable with the music from Crimson Tide. I see Alcatraz as one of those Galaxy Quest contraptions you have to time correctly to get past. I memorized the timing. This is some serious, unadulterated bullshit. Welcome to the rock. It's been said many times in this movie, but this is the appropriate roll credits moment. Man bun. Motion sensors. Remember how earlier I commented about it being serendipitous that they decide to enter here? Well, they decided to enter at the location where Dr. Cox put his fancy motion sensor. I want to use a mirror to cut the beam. Guy explains what he's doing while he's doing it, even though there was no reason to explain it out loud cliche. Which wasn't a cliche until this movie did it 20 times before now. And you tell your men to safety their weapons, drop them on the deck. I cannot give that order! If the commander's real concern is the safety of his men, he should just order them to put their guns down, because the way this is going, they're all about to get killed. By the way, what happened to using the sleeping darts? They could have hit these guys and locked them up, since they were so strict about keeping the body count low during the VX gas heist. I was trying to find a reason to sin all this, but I threw up during this part, so that's the sin. Let go of me! Don't, don't go! This kid decides to climb this ladder to a certain depth, instead of staying behind and helping Mason and Goodspeed complete this mission. Hummel doesn't raise the amount by 10 million to pay for the families of the Marines he just killed. Hummel and his men don't decide to check the tunnels to see if there's anyone else. I didn't want this. I just wanted to threaten a major American city with chemical warfare and have the government pay me a ransom without trying any funny business even though I'm a decorated general and know that they wouldn't just send a ransom because that never happens. He's dead, yet his eyes still flinch. I need to know who the f John Mason is right now, sir. 1962. J. Edgar Hoover is head of the FBI. Womack gets real broad strokes with his explanation because Paxton must not be familiar with common knowledge American history. I got a lunatic up there, man, with 15 missiles armed with some really fucky stuff. You could have told my daughter. Neither Goodspeed nor any of the other high-ranking military officials tell Mason why they're on Alcatraz until now even though they could have used it as leverage to get him to complete the mission before he decided to leave. Instead of cornering them in the sewer and shooting them, they decide to drop a bomb because we haven't had an explosion in a while. They survived this. They outrun an explosion for a while even though they're in two feet of water. I got a little salt for you. In the amount of time it takes Mason to shoot the HVAC unit over this guy's head, he can either throw the grenade or roll out of the way. What's keeping them from taking that whole thing with them? Manufactured plot tension, you say? I accept your answer, but it's still a sin. By the way, where were all these grenades a minute ago when they were blowing away the seals in the shower room? Might these have kind of been handy? I still vote the knockout darts, but if you're gonna kill people. Also, trained soldier throws the grenade with way too much time left so that it can be thrown back. How the f did Mason have enough time to get all the way up there? Is there a wormhole in Alcatraz that only he knows about? Hey, SEALs, listen up! Alcatraz still has a working PA system that can be accessed from the outside for some reason. Goodspeed is not the least bit suspicious of this missile being inexplicably unguarded. Hi, sweetie. Instead of just sniping him from afar, they decide to drop in and make their presence known, giving Goodspeed time to defend himself. Wow, seven hours blew by fast. Just six minutes ago, we were eight hours away from the deadline. And just now, Mason is trying to escape from his cell? Goodspeed's cell has no furniture, yet Mason's has a bed with a mattress, allowing him to make a contraption that will help him escape. Who could have predicted that Mason would Han Solo back into the picture. Oh, that's right, everyone. All right, back to Stanley's girlfriend, who continues to be worthless in this story and I forgot about. 300 knots, it's headed right at Oakland. Football game. Hell no, it's not going towards a football game. What time was it when Goodspeed and Mason got thrown into their cells? It was nighttime, maybe early morning. Seven hours went by, which means it should still be morning. And there's definitely no game being played this early. Also, they said it was going to Oakland, right? So why is it headed toward Candlestick Park, which is still San Francisco? It missed. How the f do you know that? From Alcatraz, you can hear when a missile fails in Oakland? You know how this works? Yeah, that's a knife. I think he has a general idea of how that works. The United States Candyman flies at half-mast whenever Michael Bay makes a movie. Goodspeed decides to run around with his extremely volatile nerve gas when he's been on everyone's case this entire film about being very, very careful when handling it. Well, also, why even bother doing this at all? The last missile is already gone. Just call the Pentagon and tell them to call off the airstrike and send a few guys with guns to kill Frog. Movie is going to make a valiant attempt to tell me Stanley catches up to this VX gas ball, but I still don't believe it. Goodspeed's marble of VX gas survives this. Stanley, chemistry nerd with no real FBI field skills, holds his own with a trained soldier psychopath. Either he just stuck himself in the heart through a bulletproof vest, or he wasn't wearing a bulletproof vest. Both of those things are terrible options. It's great he had those wires on, so they could pull him out of the way, narrowly avoiding the blast. 
Explosions of this size normally just send you safely in the water, so I don't know why Goodspeed was worried. Mason put America's biggest secrets inside a pew of a church, leaving any number of accidental discoveries or destructions to occur. Is this what I think it is? Is it a treasure map to find the Declaration of Independence? Honey, you wanna know who really killed JFK? Lee Harvey Oswald, right? Or do I want to open that can of worms? You've been chosen. The island awaits you. Hit that director in the face. Really f***ing hard. Hey! Hey, mate! I think there's something wrong with your suit. Yeah. There's a dead guy in here. Only the minute of man burns. Only the minute of man burns. In this particular cell block, Machine Gun Kelly had what we call in the prison system, a bitch. And one night, in a jealous rage, Kelly took a makeshift knife for Shiv and cut out the bitch's eyes. Candyman. 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 And understand, that Terminator is out there. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity, or remorse, or fear, and it absolutely will not stop. No, I just, I just said I want to find some rockets. You tell me, or you're going to the hospital or the f***ing morgue.